According to an analysis by USA Today, among companies listed on the S&P 500, over 10% of them paid an effective tax rate of 0% over the past year. Over 10% of the richest corporations paid 0% in taxes. I mean, think about that within the context of anybody else, right? I mean, if you're a plumber and you make $65,000 a year, you're pro probably pay paying 10%, 15%, whatever the case is after all your deductions and whatnot. Your effective rate is probably about 10%. So a plumber or an accountant or a construction worker or a police officer, they're all paying a higher tax rate than the gigantic multi multinational corporations. Uh, the priorities are so fucked up, it's hard to wrap your mind around it. There are 57 separate companies listed on the index that paid a 0% rate. Among those is Verizon is just one example. News Corp is another example. Um, but we had a story similar to this not that long ago, so this isn't even really much of a surprise, and we've you know, grown accustomed to hearing about how much we're getting screwed over and corporations are getting the upper hand on us. Uh, there are a lot of corporations that pay a negative tax rate. And yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. So when it comes time to pay taxes, you have to pay your taxes, right? These guys not only don't have to pay taxes, the government gives them a massive subsidy. They give them a gigantic check from the American people. We earned our money by working hard, right? But our money still goes to these people. A negative tax rate, think about that. The only scenario in which a negative tax rate would make sense is if you're talking about, for example, the poorest people in the country and you say, hey, you know what, to survive, they need a negative tax rate, they need you know, a check for X amount of money from the government, essentially like a welfare system, right? Even Milton Friedman you know, uh, played around with that idea. But this is a negative tax rate to the people who need a negative tax rate, the absolute least in the country, even less than the richest people in the country, because these multinational corporations are worth, worth more than the individuals. It's absolutely incredible. To give you some specifics on this, uh, IBM had a tax rate of negative 3.8%. Wouldn't you like a negative tax rate, uh, a tax rate of negative 3.8%? I would love it. Maybe that's just me. Yahoo had a negative 8.7% tax rate. ExxonMobil, no surprise here after giving uh, all that money to the politicians, negative 14.2%. GE, get this, negative 61.3%. They're basically a nationalized company, except they get to privatize the profits and then they socialize the losses. So we give them money no matter how they perform, even if they didn't deserve it. What happened, Republicans? I thought that uh, free market was the way to go. Apparently, Republicans are as anti-free market as you can get, and they love welfare checks as long as it goes to the richest uh, multinational corporations. Now, uh, the sad reality is, this is the same theme that we talk about on the show all the time, which is how it's gotten to this point, money and politics. Look, there's a reason why IBM, Yahoo, ExxonMobil, and GE have, have a negative tax rate. There's a reason why Verizon and News Corp have a 0% tax rate. Uh, and that's because they bought the politicians. Guess what? If you give money to the politician super PACs, if you give money to their campaigns, if you find a way to give legal bribes to them, which, by the way, uh, with the Supreme Court cases over the years, including the most recent one, Citizens United, they have legalized bribery. If you actually participate in that system and give the politicians a lot of money, they will take care of you. It's the good old boys club. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. And the only uh, incredibly sad thing about this is that means our government has been hijacked by special interests. It's been hijacked by the rich. And there's a, a, a term for that. There's multiple terms for that. It's, it's a, an oligarchy or a kleptocracy. Government of, by, and for the rich. It's rule by the elite. And the American people, our opinions don't matter at all. I mean, look at something like universal background checks for guns. You can see the same theme of money and politics here as well. Because 91% of the American people wanted a universal background check. But we couldn't even get a watered down background check bill into law. That's what Manchin Toomey was. It was riddled with all sorts of loopholes. It was the weakest background check you, you could possibly imagine. But even that didn't get through. Now, why did it not get through? Because the NRA, which takes money from the gun manufacturers, donated heavily to the politicians on the Republican side, and they blocked it. 
So, uh, what happened? The gun manufacturers who should least affect gun policy in the United States because they have a tremendous conflict of interest where they want to make as much money as possible, so they want to sell as many guns as possible to whoever, even if they're psychotic, right? Those are the people who are controlling the debate and the policy in the United States. It's exactly the same problem that goes on here. It's exactly the same problem in almost any political issue you want to talk about. It is the cancer of our political system. Money and politics. Because guess what? If money equals free speech, then by definition, whoever has the most money has the loudest voice in a democracy. And that violates the principle of one man, one vote. Because in reality, ExxonMobil gets a couple million votes. You only get one measly vote. Who do you think the politician is going to listen to? You or ExxonMobil? 